Well, welcome everyone. We're so happy that you're with us on this beautiful Thursday morning as we launch into week four of our eight weeks to director um, business training series. Um, and today we're really talking about inviting and closing, which is huge things to do. So. And one of the real advantages, I think, of these Thursday morning webinars is that we have this fabulous team of people that are contributing ideas and suggestions and recommendations for what to do. And what is so great is that Harper, Lisa, Katie, Ashley, Becky are in the trenches, so to speak. They're actively building their businesses, so they're sharing with us ideas that really, really work. All right, so today we're talking really still about launching your business really strong. So by now we've set up our businesses, our, our websites, we've got some of the logistics in place. We've really got some good skill sets starting around connecting with people and talking with people because that is what we do. And um, we reviewed ideas to help us um, really direct our customers and, and, and stepping into some sort of a supplement program and getting them going. So really now we're ready to launch our businesses and that begins with inviting friends and family to events and meetings and appointments. And so our objectives for today, um, for session four, our first one is to help all of all of us listening to be able to generate 2,000 PV or more over the next eight to 10 weeks. And we're gonna do that in two ways. The first way is by developing a customer base of 20 to 30 members and identifying potential business partners. These are the two skills that we need, we will, learn about over and over and over because these are the crux of what we do every single day and even those of us that have had a business for years and years we do these every single day so um, the skills that we're going to learn is inviting and closing um, we're going to review with some of the most effective events that we have found and then we'll um, talk about some principles of inviting and then also discuss just the role of the leader in offering options at the end of the appointment and um, with learning this, we are now set to put our businesses in motion. Absolutely. So we're going to start um, by talking about some of the most effective uh, events and appointments and ways to really invite guests. Um, the first being always first and foremost um, in person or by phone. So actually having communication with somebody. I am the last person who will ever knock um, emails or Facebook or anything like that because I built a lot of my business that way, but I, I certainly um, believe that individual appointments, um, talking to people in person are the best way to go. Webinars uh, like the Monday night webinars or any webinars that you might hold uh, for your personal team. Conference calls um, that can include health chats um, or just getting a bunch of people on the phone to talk about one thing in particular. In-home events like grand openings, healthy home, those smoothie workshops which are just amazing. Facebook events, um, then we have three-way calls which we've talked a lot about and will continue to talk about because there is just some known facts behind people who utilize three-way calling and um, the just higher success in business that they have. So if this isn't something you're comfortable with, I would certainly um, speak to your upline, practice with it, figure out how to become comfortable because it really is a game changer. Um, inviting people to area events, regional, global events, um, things where you get to really just be a guest with them, which is fun. And then vendor events. Now, vendor events are a great opportunity to meet new people and have new contacts. And this would be having a booth at um, a farmer's market or um, we have like holiday vendors event um, near the holidays. You know, there's tons of ways to really just get a table set out. In fact, um, my husband has gone to gyms and just walked in and said, have you ever, have you ever thought about or had any interest in somebody um, speaking about nutritional supplementation to um, incoming customers? And we've had a few people that were like, yeah, that's, a, that's great if you're going to do it for free. And in fact, sometimes we even offer incentives for them to do it. Hey, we'll give you... $25 worth of product samples if you let us sit in front of your gym for 10 minutes. So um, just cool ways that, that you can meet new people and have booths in different places. Um, and so for most of these events, um, there is going to be a way that we want to conduct them. And this is something important that I wanted to share with everybody because this can be the intimidating piece. What is it exactly that I'm wanting to cover on any of these events? And I think there's a really um, standard approach for it all. 
For one, you'll see here our objective for the meeting. It is so fundamental um, psychologically and personally that you let people know what it is that you're going to be talking about. So whether that's on the phone or in person or even like an online event or a presentation for an event, you're going to want to say, you know, so this is kind of the stuff that I want to share with you. Or, you know, if you sit down with someone one-on-one, -on -one, you might say something like, um, so I know that you are really excited to learn more about Shackley and I, I want to go over that a little bit with you. So today, you know, I, I will tell you a little bit about my story and then I'll go through some of my, my favorite products and things that I love about Shackley and the Shackley difference. But then I, I really want to hear about you. So you're going to let them know what's coming. Same thing with a Facebook event. Today on tonight's Facebook event, we're going to cover blank, blank, blank. You know, I'm going to let you know of deals. Whatever it is that you want that event to entail, you want to let people know because this is something that really helps people bring their guard down. Because um, it's new and it's it's not something that they know of. So if they're sitting down for an appointment with you in person and um, you don't let them know what it is that you might be covering, they might have guards up thinking this is going to take forever. They're going to share a whole bunch of stuff I don't want to hear. You know, you want to let them know this is about you. I'm just going to share briefly and then I want to learn more about you. So having the objective. Sharing your story because let's face it, it's stories that sell. It's not really anything else. It's who you are and how you share it. Um, sharing a little bit about the products and the science, including the Shackley difference, and then of course always honing in even just a bit on the um, the business opportunity, allowing other people to make that make that decision for themselves. Excellent. So this next slide. Yeah, this next slide is the PV plan. So we talk about this on every single webinar um, because every uh, um, leader on these calls just really believes in creating PV plans. I know that I just don't know where my business would be if I didn't take the opportunity to create PV plans for myself and for my team. And so we like to come together and really show you how you might create a PV plan for what we're particularly talking about. So today for inviting. So if you look here, um, we have four to five group events equaling an estimated, so this is estimated, an estimated thousand PV. So that means um, if you had five events, that, that's about 200 PV per event that you're having. Um, individual appointments, typically the average um, order is around 100 PV. So if you're sitting down with somebody and doing a product guide presentation, that's about 100 PV, um, a three with an upline. And then talking about the business can sometimes elicit um, anywhere from 250 to 750 PV, depending on the kit that they get. And you see options here for 500 and 250. Um, and then, of course, at the bottom here you have eight guests invited to a product conference calls or webinars. So this is getting people to those health highlights or the Monday night webinars um, and really getting them to make purchases. So eight people ordering 50 PV to 400. So really looking at how can you utilize the techniques that we're going to teach you today and how can you um, develop a PV plan around that to help you reach your goals. Ashley, one of the most profound profound things I think you said even now and earlier was that you sit down and you create a PV plan for yourself every month. And I don't want people to miss that because you're a successful established sales leader and you still mm -hmm. are creating your monthly PV plans. Absolutely. I do it at the beginning Absolutely. of the month and in fact I come back about halfway through and I um, just reevaluate it and make sure I'm on track and if I'm not yeah. on track I, I reestablish it and change a few things up but yeah I think um, beautifully in this business we got to practice what we preach so if we want to be really good leaders we got to do what we expect um, our mm -hmm. the people that we've brought into this business to do as well. Well said, very good, yeah. Mm -hmm. So connecting and talking with people is now what we do for a living. And so we want it to become a normal part of our lives. And I will say when I first read this slide, this for my personality, this is relief to me because I know I can connect and talk with people. And I'm so glad I get to do it for a living. There are others of you that are listening that are now panicked <laughs> because <laughs> it involves <laughs> connecting and talking with people. But I want you to know... Um, all of us bring to the table different skill sets, and um, you have other skill sets that are going to be a strength for you that you won't have to spend as much time on, and then maybe this connecting and talking piece is, or vice versa. But just, um, just know that now that is a part of what we do every day. And so when we're looking at um, the principles for inviting, we do want to love people where they're at. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about um, Joe and Barb and what they bring to this training mm -hmm, is that this mm -hmm. is throughout the entire thing, we are going to just be respectful for where people are at. So these are just some general principles that we want to make sure and listen to. 
Um, so we want to watch our language. We don't want to use shoulds or um, you really have to do this or you need to, you know, whatever. And when you hear that, um, just think about how you would respond if someone said that to you. I do kind of get my feathers ruffled. Um, it reminds me a little bit of when my mom's in a bad mood and she tells me I have to do something. You just, you just kind of, um, you automatically kind of dig your heels in. Yeah. And so just like what Ashley was talking about, bringing down those walls, we just want to make this relaxing and informative and loving. And we just want them to love being with us, basically. Um, so we want to give people space. I love this languaging. This may not be of interest to you um, that it might and I'd love to show it to you um, and so offering a solution to a problem um, but we want to wait until that has been acknowledged um, so someone might say something and then we might be inclined to just jump all over that when um, they may not really know that it's that big of a deal just yet um, so asking questions discovering needs um, practice active listening so this is really being a participant in the conversation and um, from what I understand about this whole principle is someone would say something and then you would say okay so what I hear you saying is you really are tired all the time or whatever the whatever the principle is. So just making sure, and people like that actually, it's really, um, we don't sometimes take for granted this whole listening piece because not everybody is always heard. And so for you to be able to acknowledge um, what they're saying is very affirming to them. Um, using third party resources so that we don't seem like we're the ones that have all the answers. Um, we can refer them to webinars or the Shackley TV videos or testimonies. Um, Ashley already talked about this, but using stories. It could be your story, or maybe you don't have as many stories yet, and that's okay. You can use other people's stories. Um, and then the biggest thing that I love on this whole page is just asking permission um, to share information. Just such a good, good um, thing for us to remember. Can I just underline one thing, yeah. Becky, that, um, that you said is, um, mm -hmm. Avoiding offering a solution until a problem has been acknowledged. Um, yes. mm -hmm. This week, I want to acknowledge one of our leaders who has a sister whose family has all kinds of health issues that she has been seeing as long she's been in Shackley about a year and a half now, I think it is. And to her credit, you know, how easy and how quickly we see that especially someone we're close to so that you know mm -hmm. all the principles we're talking about today are not just for strangers that we meet these are for you know family members <laughs> as well and so it would have been so easy for her to say your kids are sick all the time look at all the problems that you have in your family you need to look at Shackley it would have been so easy for her to to do that and to her credit she did not and she allowed mm -hmm. her sister to come to it and once her sister acknowledged that she had an issue, then she was completely open and now is even thinking about doing the business like in two mm. days. But wow. I, I just want you to understand how powerful that is, is we can't tell people they have a problem. It's offensive. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, and we do it a lot in our families outside of Shackley uh, conversations, right? So it's a wonderful principle to just adopt into our lives in general. All right, mm -hmm. avenues for inviting oh, Ashley. Yeah, well I would kind of bounce off that in the acknowledgement piece, you know, really acknowledging people um, for where they're at. So we, I certainly um, see a lot of people that, you know, they do some things that, that I did once before that I thought was really healthy and, and maybe it wasn't so much, you know, like taking different vitamins and, and doing things like that, but taking the time to really acknowledge um, the steps that people are taking really um, starts to build that trust. And we'll get into a little bit later how trust is the true indicator of a successful business. And Shackley is building trust with other people. So another thing that kind of bounces off of this slide is um, the idea of building your brand. And so I believe that we do that through um, also in terms of this hierarchy of touch, you know, really sharing on social media um, just everyday ways that you use Shackley or that you believe in health or that you um, really walk the talk of um, what Dr. Shackley has promoted. Um, but same in just your everyday life. Um, it, I, I call it building your brand via integrity. Um, so it's not saying I'm doing the best thing and I'm taking the best stuff and I'm doing this, but really just um, 
having real life, you know, I, I posted this morning, for instance, I just ran out of my Infusel eye makeup remover, and I thought, here's a good opportunity to take a picture of this empty bottle and tell people it took nine months to run out of it. What an extraordinary savings. And just add a little tidbit in there that I'm... Um, taking care of a little bit of preventative health in that I used to use stuff that really put some bad chemicals in my eyes that could have really resulted in something negative in the long run for me. And now I know that I have something safe, but also that it works and that it lasts forever. So it was a very subtle way of just sharing something about Shackley that really works for me um, while not shaming other people, which is kind of bouncing off of that. But here are some avenues for inviting. Um, Facebook and Instagram posts. So like I said, posting these things that get people to go, huh, that's interesting. Or, you know, I know pe I've had, a, I had three people message me already today that went, I didn't realize you had eye makeup remover, <laughs> which is like, really? I told you like 10 times. But, you know, <laughs> this is how they have to hear it. <laughs> My... <laughs> My rule of thumb being that people need to have Shackley in front of them five to seven times at a bare minimum. So these are some ways that you can do that. Facebook posts, Instagram posts, emails, newsletters, um, Facebook messaging, personal text messaging, and of course, the best of all, a phone call or live face-to-face um, -face conversation. So I just, I mean, honestly, Shackley just comes up so natural for me. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this later, so I don't want to get into it too much. But um, just start to live the Shackley way out loud. You know, I um, everyone knows that I go to coffee shops to make my morning smoothies. That's just what I do. I did it today, and I do it out loud. You know, I let people see that this is a part of my lifestyle, and it's easy, and it's part of building my brand via integrity. So people are going to respond to why we're inviting them more than what we're inviting them to. So in, in, in addition to sharing how much you love Shackley, how much you use it, and not being shameful, you want to let people know why personally you want them to be there. It's all about authenticity and integrity with all of this. It's If you can be your truest you and really just share with people um, why you want them there, you're, you're going to have great success in this business. I had a coaching call with um, somebody who I... Um, I'm just going to say, is going to promote to director this month. I'm just positive of it. And she's just having an extraordinary month. And um, she was talking to me um, a little bit about um, somebody that she was kind of upset about their response. She expected a different response when she talked to them about Shackley. And um, I told her, like I said this before in the webinar, just stop and think about um, – honestly what you're feeling and when she said honestly what she was feeling it was the perfect response so if you're honestly thinking of somebody because you think that they could really benefit from vitalizer then honestly tell them that if you really think that somebody would benefit from coming to your event then just tell them that way the truer the truer it comes out the um, easier it'll be to share and the more often people are actually going to respond to you so these are the real broken down ways of inviting. This is my five-step process for inviting. Um, the first and foremost for, for everything that I do is going to be that permission marketing. So ask permission to send an invitation. This would be, you know, calling someone up and just saying, hey, I'm going to have a smoothie workshop in a couple of weeks, and I really would love to have you there. I think you'd really enjoy this and get to know some fun people, and um, I really think you'd love the shakes. Would it be okay if I sent you an invite? Or would you be interested in, my, in me sending you an invite or any way that you can ask permission? So that's step one. So I have um, the people on my team create a list of all the people that they'd like to invite. And then I have them do step one. And then they keep track of those that said yes or those that said, you know, I'm not going to be able to make it or whatever happens there. The next piece is actually sending the invite. I will be honest. My favorite way to send an invite is um, good old-fashioned mail snail mail, right, in the mail, um, especially for live events. Um, but you can also do them via Facebook message, email, um, other ways like that. I just, I really like the idea of a paper invite. So then you're actually sending the invites. The next piece is getting the response. So I acknowledge that in step one, you might get some people's responses because they might say, you know, I'm just, even though you're not giving them a date, you know, you'll have people, I'm busy every day, all the time, every <laughs> single time of the day. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, right. And, um, yeah, right. and I have a golden rule that is I only accept yeses and coffee dates. That's it. 
I just only accept yeses and coffee dates. And it's not because I'm going to be this super aggressive person on the phone, but I will just simply say, oh my gosh, no worries at all. You're busy all the time. How about this? I'll fit into your schedule. I'm free, like I always say, two options, blank and blank, what works for you. And I continue to give them two options till they say yes. Same goes for getting the response. You call them up, you say, hey, you know, um, I sent that invite in the mail. I just wanted to make sure you got it. And then they say, yes, I've received it, or no, I haven't, and that's when you hear the answer. You know, I'd love to, but I can, or yes, I'm absolutely going to be there, and if it's, if it's no or maybe, you turn it into a coffee date, and if it's yes, you add them to your yes list. So the next piece is um, making multiple contacts and or sending teasers. So for a smoothie workshop, for instance, you might have a Facebook event, and uh, Katie Odom does this, and I just love it, where she actually runs a poll. Um, she has five of the smoothies pre-made for people to come and make or um, the ingredients pre-purchased, but she lets people vote on the final two. So that <laughs> lets kind of gets people in their head, like, ooh, I'm excited. I want to try this peanut butter one, or I, you know, there's a pina colada smoothie that's amazing, you know, so they, they're getting it in their head a little bit about what they're doing, or um, you can be posting... Uh, live Facebook posts that let people know about the event that's coming up. You can send them a quick text message. When we do health chats on our team, we actually um, get a list of who's invited and we create um, kind of like a pre-call reminder, but it has some sort of fact on it about what we're talking about. So if it's diabetes, for instance, it might be a fact about how common diabetes is or something like that that really draws people in that reminds them, oh yeah, this is why I wanted to be a part of this. Um, so all sorts of different ways that you can just get a little teaser out there. Remind them why they were so excited about this in the first place. And then finally, step five, and never forget this step, is to call them the night before. Call them on the phone. Pick the phone up. Call them and remind them of the event. And so one thing that um, I learned, I don't remember who I learned it from, but I use it all the time and I love it, is basically saying, Hey, I, I'm not sure if I told you or not, but I just wanted to let you know you don't have to bring a thing for tomorrow. I'm just so excited to see you. So this kind of takes the pressure off because a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to call again. Look at all the contacts that I've done. So take the pressure off. Just let them know they don't have to bring anything. And this also gives them the opportunity to say, oh, darn it, I'm not going to be, be able to make it after all. And you, the opportunity to say, don't even worry about it. Let's have coffee instead. So that every single person that you intended to get in front of at this event, you are still getting in front of at the event or at a coffee date. That's such a beautiful whole um, just list of things and the way you your um, heart behind it, Ashley, I think that's what's so appealing is that you are warm and welcoming and no problem. Let's just go ahead and, and we'll get something else set up here. I absolutely love it. Love it, love it. Um, so here's another example of a teaser. Uh, Ashley just talked about that. I think I saw this on Angie Thomas's page, um, but just putting something out there, number one difference in my opinion between Shackley and other health and wellness companies, see what I mean by safe and pure? I mean, that's just cute and clever and informative. Um, another one we have here, and it's one of the sales leaders in our group. I can't remember whose cute kids these are, <laughs> but well, it this was, is- an, it, it, was, it was Angie when she and one of her downlines were doing a Facebook. Okay. And these were the teasers before it, but I was thinking that these teasers and what and what Ashley just laid out really applies to any event to which we are inviting somebody. Mm -hmm. So I just thought these were great examples, and I'm going to capture the ones that you just shared, Ashley. Those are excellent. But this one was funny. I love this one. Yeah, um, that you can't take my. You may not be able to take your kid eyes off my cute kids, but look at those floors. Um, so just really cute, <laughs> clever ideas. Um, I want to add one more thing um, that I just learned from Katie last week that I thought was such a good idea and just something to consider is she said she um, three times a week, and I don't know if she sets a timer. Anyway, somehow you figure out when you want to do this, but three times a week, um, like let's say it's 10 a.m. On, on Friday morning, she asked herself, how is Shackley impacting me today? And then somehow capture that in a picture or a post or both and put that out there. And it might be about um, maybe you're at your child's um, Valentine party and it's like, oh my goodness, I'm so thrilled that I get to be at this Valentine party because of my Shackley business that has brought me home. Or, or it might be your smoothie or, you know, it, it's just a clever way to do that. And it, 
Oh, and it does bring nice. more um, yeah. of your life. It's just like this little cute picture. It does bring more of your life into into that. And she said she switches up the days and times, so it's not always the same on Facebook. But I just thought that was such a good idea. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. Yep, mm-hmm. very nice. Mm-hmm. So you're getting kind of a strong picture of how inviting can be done really well. And there's a couple things that have been shared beautifully up at this point. It always should be personal. You don't want people to think that they're one of 10 million people that you're inviting and you don't care who they are. Just get a butt in the seat, right? It needs to be <laughs> personal. You're not just filling a quota. It's not about you. I, I love, and I can't, I was trying to think, I can't remember if it was in if it's coming up or if it's last week's or next week's, but somewhere at some point in time, there's a point that Ashley's going to be making about having no agenda. And that's kind of something people need to feel this when one. you're, is it this one? Good. When you're inviting them to something, you don't want them to think that you have an agenda of a certain amount of people and a sales quota, and they're just going to fill your need, right? And so you want to make it personal. You want to make it about them. And there's been some really good dialogue about that. You also want to light some curiosity fire, fires, which is that the teaser idea fits that perfectly. You're lighting a little bit of curiosity files and you're painting a picture of a culture of of respect and no pressure and fun and interaction and all of that goes into successful inviting. So we wanted to really quick come back to the ideas of meaningful authentic conversation because it's really such a fundamental um, piece of our interaction and talking with people. So uh, we want to go back to the tell me about when you're inviting people to things and you're sending them invitations to, you know, whatever you're doing, you want to you want to make sure they know you're thinking about them. And so I thought of you because is one of my favorites. But if you do tell me about and you want to have that conversation, that interaction that really helps you be more natural and the the next part of, of asking them say, and then you can say, you know, I remember when we were talking last week and you told me this and I'm having something and I thought you might love it so that acknowledging and that listening and that interacting makes it authentic it, it builds that rapport and the trust that's going between you and the person you're talking with because you have done your part well to make them not a, an object of your sales but someone that matters right so now we're going to look at some specific examples of types of invitation invitations that apply uh, to the principles that we've set up here yes and one of the things that we can do um, we talked about at the beginning of these webinar series um, the product guide exercise which I just love um, which is a great place to start inviting so as we had mentioned it's basically where you pick up a product guide you grab a pad of sticky notes and on each page of that product guide you read you know read the cover read from cover to cover and put a sticky note on each page writing down the people that you think of authentically think of who comes to mind when you're reading about joint health complex who comes to mind when you're reading about the baby care products you know you're actually just writing it down and then you come back and now this is a list of contacts this is really great for brand new people but it's also really good for people who've never done this before um, just to pick up a product guide and start from scratch really and so one way that we can do that is just to simply say, you know, I was just reading through the Shackley product guide and I came across some products and you immediately popped into my head as someone who would want to know about this. May I tell you about them? Or would you be interested in hearing about them? Or um, can I send you a video about them? So again, um, permission marketing, so you're going to ask permission first, but it's a really great authentic way and reason to contact people that, that come straight from the heart. I genuinely thought about you when I read about you these products. Your name popped instantly in my head and I would love to share more. Are you interested? Fabulous. Very good. Mm-hmm. So now look at this. It's pretty much identical to what Ashley went through a few slides ago. These are the steps that I use when I'm doing an in-home. And you can see it's the same thing, calling and letting them know. I like to have some sort of, if I can, hard copy invite because I'll even tell them, you know, just pop it up on your fridge so you, you know the date's coming and I'll call you and we'll talk through it, right? So sometimes I, I really do like doing a hard copy invite, but I do a lot of email and occasionally I'll do an invite, not a ton. But you can see the steps are really important because I I am if I have had many a brilliant meeting with no one in the room and you just <laughs> do not grow your business that way so you got to get in there first 
before you do anything else. And so it really is important that we commit to becoming good inviters. And that's really why we spend so much time talking about this with you guys because, uh, you know, um, you get a clean house out of the deal. That's really all you get when yes. you have an interview, right? <laughs> and so uh, we want to make sure you have a process and you have a plan and you follow it because if you do, you will get success. Um, and then we wanted to talk one more time, and, and Ashley mentioned it beautifully, but the whole maybe thing, what do you do about the maybes? Um, many times the best way you can make sure you have an empty room is that you have ten maybes because maybes <laughs> really mean no. Because who really wakes up and says, I have so much time today that I think I'm going to do everything I could. Most people just talk themselves out of the optional things, right? Mm -hmm. So. One of the things you can do when you're talking to people is say, if you're not sure you can make it, that is okay. It might be best for us to plan something one-on-one, -on -one, or I can let you know of the next one, but I only have a limited amount of space, and if you can't come, I'll go ahead and invite someone else to take your place. It's very <laughs> respectful and really gentle. Like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, Pat Semek actually taught me this, but she said, what you do is you move your meeting into a place of importance. It matters mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. You've invited mm -hmm. them for a reason. And if they can't come, you just need to know. But no, you're not going to make food for them because they might feel like coming and you're not going <laughs> to have a space for them because it might work out. Right. It's just a ma it's, a, it's a gentle, loving way saying, no, I need a commitment from you because this is important right. enough for that. Mm -hmm. And it honors you and what you're doing. But just like Ashley said, you know, I, most of my one-on-ones come from a meeting that I've invited someone to come to. Mm -hmm. um, and then I turn totally. to a coffee appointment. And so there's just a natural process to this. And it's honoring and respectful of them, but also of you. And so, you know, yeah. just because so many of us have had many, many maybe meetings where it's just you and the dog, we just want to help you have some language that <laughs> helps you be more effective. <laughs> in getting people there. So. Very yeah. good. And if, if I can add really quickly, Lisa, um, yeah. one thing that's also really important about this is that um, I just know that when you um, have those 10 maybes, right, and you accept the 10 maybes and you, you let that be the case, that you're going to prepare for 10 people and then when one person shows up or maybe even nobody shows up, that's really going to wreck your confidence. Um, mm -hmm. As leaders and as people in general, the best thing we can do is acknowledge our weaknesses and I'm pretty sure most humans can say it's a weakness of theirs when they get disappointed, <laughs> that it affects their confidence. Mm -hmm. And so um, when you set up coffee dates, and so say you get to the end of inviting and you had 25 people you were going to invite and only three said yes, but you have, you know, the other 22 set for a coffee date, you're not going to be very bummed out. You're not going to be very bummed mm -hmm. out at all right. um, because you were very thoughtful in how you were going to do this. In addition, when you're doing that reminder call to find out, you know, where does this person fall and you might have a few more people drop off. The difference is if you know you have two people coming to an event, you can prepare for two people. You mm -hmm. can have just enough stuff for two people and you can be confident for two people and and that is sometimes when the most magic happens mm -hmm. is when it's just a couple people and that's a totally. good thing um, yeah. but it can be really bumming if you're prepared for 10 and only two show up and then yep. you're trying to hide the fact that you made an entire lasagna or whatever you know so <laughs> this is just mm -hmm. the way that we can really work with ourselves and work with our own confidence and really play into human weaknesses not individual weaknesses mm -hmm. these are human weaknesses and how we can best um, support ourselves I think yeah. And Ashley, yeah, I just want to point out, I'm getting a little concerned about the amount of coffee that you are drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't drink coffee at all, actually. <laughs> I can take vitamins. Yeah, 18 coffee dates a day. Uh, <laughs> okay. I just pretend. I actually just bring my protein. Oh, you're a good girl. Okay. All right, Lisa. All right. So part of this process still is making sure that your guests know what to expect. Many times when you're inviting people to something, they have this pre uh contrived or pre-established mindset that they're coming to something like they've been to before. And so you'll fall into this trap of people kind of stereotyping you and they think, well, if I go, then I got to have my obligatory purchase because then the hostess won't get her hostess credits and, and, and they just don't want to participate in that. And so you have an opportunity when you're inviting people to help shape their perspective a little bit. And I love, I heard some dialogue, oh, I wish I knew the girl's name. It was on a tape and I would love to give her credit, but I heard some dialogue many years 
years ago that really helped me and she said I want you to know that this meeting really is about education and that our focus here is going to be on topics that I think you're going to be interested in and you'll have a lot of great input as well um, and so you just want people to know that this is not you know a typical sales party I don't ever tell them to leave their wallet at home because I don't want them to leave their wallet at home I want them to come in and buy a big pack but I don't want them to think that that's the goal the goal is to have a really important meeting and talk about stuff that I know that they're going to find value in right um, I do like the starting and ending on time concept with meeting I think it does show respect mm -hmm. um, I don't always say it but if it's an open house type thing I'm very clear that people know that the meeting starts on the hour not that they can kind of come and go and pop in at you know 30 after and leave early and stuff like that because it's really not fair to the other people so I it depends on the situation but a lot of times I'll say we're gonna be starting right at you know two so feel free to come early I'll have some snacks and I'm just really excited to see you um, and then of course make sure in your time I, I I'm looking at this slide and I know it came from one of our past uh, presentations on doing a meeting but that that closed comment is just to make sure that you know y you're building the time in to have conversation and and um, work with people at the end of the meeting so and I just love that Lisa I just want to point out I am one of the people that um, I never went to any events of anybody like Pampered Chef or anything. I just didn't like to go to those things. And so what you all are talking about and offering options, I would be the coffee date person. And I would say, well, I don't drink coffee, but I'll drink lemonade. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> and so um, so I just want you to know, and if you are coming into this thinking, yeah, that's me. I'm not really a party person. It's really good for us to learn these things of how to be inviting and how to have people over. But to remember, there are people like you who would much rather meet one-on-one -on -one and um, that that would be great for them. Now, I Tammy did such a good job that I did go to her event <laughs> when I first started, so she did really Yay, good job. Tammy, I know she did, um, but I just want to put that out there because there are some people that's like, I just I don't like they don't want to be out their home or you know there's all kinds of things. So just having that option of those appointments is such a good avenue for several personalities. I think. Mm. So here's an example. This I think is. Um, Mary um, and Katie's that they did and I love this idea they had a wellness um, hour once a month on Tuesdays and they had different topics every month and um, you can read there what the different topics were but I love too that this was really inviting for um, particularly young families because kids were welcome to attend too and so you can take this idea and mold it however you want to do it maybe you're going to do it um, you know, in the evenings once a month, um, however you want to do it. Use your own creativity, but this is just another um, example of, of one of the ways you can invite. Another one is a Facebook um, grand opening. And Facebook events have been very popular, and people have had um, really good success with them. And you can pick whatever uh, topic you want to do. Um, you can send the invitations through Facebook. Now, I think I do think that your attendance will be higher if um, you can call them, um, yep. I, even if you have to leave a message. I just think voice to voice, they can hear the excitement in your voice. There's something about tone that we miss in the written word. And um, some of you are really good writers and you can communicate very well written, but for a lot of us, we need our voices to be able to um, express our enthusiasm. Um, so I think that's um, really important. And then, um, you know, we've got a little system here, two days before the event, you can post um, on your page and, and tell people and have them, you know, um, they can bring other people or, you know, however you want your Facebook um, event to go. But I think this is um, a really nice avenue. And I will say one other thing, and, and I don't know if this is always the case, but for me personally, when I have Facebook events, I purposefully do not invite a lot of people. Um, and I'll tell you why. I And so I might invite like uh, 12 to 15 people on a Facebook event. When I have been invited to other um, businesses, Facebook events, and I see that there's 371 people invited, I actually feel like they don't need me, that I'm, I wasn't like super right. maybe exactly. thrilled or drawn in by the topic. And so I don't, that isn't a, appealing to me. I feel like when it's a smaller number, and again, this could be me, there could be another rationale that is different about it. But I feel like because I called those people personally, because then I asked permission to send them an invitation, I told them why I wanted them to come, it's on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. It seems very personal and special. And um, Francine and I just did a Facebook event this week where we both invited five people. 
and it was one of our best events we've ever had. <laughs> and so mm-hmm. just just to know that it doesn't ha- it can be a larger event, but it doesn't have to. And if you want to have more people, um, there's probably strategies around that. But for me personally, that's one of my takeaways from the Facebook events. That's a great Good point. point. Mm-hmm. Okay, Ash. So this is the slide that Lisa was talking about. <laughs> it was in my head. <laughs> it's in Lisa's head, and now I've projected it into the slide. Um, and so this, I am going to say um, the foundation of this slide is to allow Shackley to mold you. And I'm going to explain that a little bit more. But remember this, allow Shackley to mold you. Um, Sometimes you're going to run into people, you're going to meet new people along the way. I mean, I live in an RV, so I meet new people every single day. And inviting is a process. It's about connecting with people. It's about building that trust that I talked about. Once a connection is there, the, the possibilities for the future are, are truly endless of what can, what can happen. So take away Shackley from the objective. And what I mean by that is... Um, now, and I've shared this before, but I don't do anything without creating an objective. And it sounds a little silly, but literally everything I do, if I'm going to go into a coffee shop, if I'm going to the grocery store, if I'm going to the gym, uh, my business is my life. I have allowed Shackley to mold me. And not in the sense that I'm working way too much or I don't have a balance, but I've let Shackley become who I am so much so that I can remove Shackley. So what I mean by that is if I'm going into a gym and I say uh, my objective is to make three three friends. Key here, make three friends. Not sell Shackley to three people. Make three friends. Because as you're building this business, I always tell my tell my team, your warm market kind of stinks. Your warm market's going to stink a little bit because they're going to they're not going to do the things you expected them to do, especially those uh, real close friends and family. So what I tell my team is cold is gold. Those cold people, those people you don't know yet, they are the gold of your business. So open your heart and open your mind and be you while letting Shackley mold you. So when I go into a gym and I decide ahead of time, I want to meet three people. It's not that I'm this overly like running up to I make be my friend, be my friend. If that if we are if we are mindful of making friends, the opportunity to make friends is everywhere. Whether it's seeing somebody that um, is, I mean, as simply as I love the pants that you're wearing. Where did you get them? Oh, I saw you dropped off a kid. Do you love the daycare here? Oh, I, you know, this is gym examples. Um, I love, I have a, this new water bottle, for instance, that's really, um, really cool. It actually tells you when to drink water all day long because I'm really bad at drinking water. <laughs> and so I bought it for myself and I had like two people come up to me and say, where did you get that? And instead of just giving them an answer, I started a conversation. Are you bad at drinking water? Like I am, where are you from? What do you, you know, so being mindful of, of creating friendships because ultimately Shackley is going to come out if you're having an authentic, true blue conversation with somebody because Shackley is such a big part of your life. And this is why knowing our why and remembering our why is so stinking important because the more you let Shackley shine through as who you are, the faster you will grow. So I'm drinking out of Shackley water bottles. I'm taking my energy shoes at the gym rather than before I get to the gym. I'm adding my performance in at the gym. I am letting Shackley be a part of who I am. I'm letting Shackley mold me. And I will say that Shackley has given me so, so much from um, life transformations and health to um, just the beauty of our lifestyle and our life by design. But ultimately, I think one of the best things that Shackley has given me is my ability to be a better person. I am so much more mindful. I am so much more friendly. I am so much more willing and able to make friends. And the the truth is, is that if Shackley does not come out of it, that's okay. Because I have so many awesome new people in my life as a result of just wanting the opportunity to share something I believe in. I'm not about selling Shackley. I'm about trying to come into places where people might need what I have. And I always tell people, God has called me to share Shackley and the Shackley effect. God has not called me to make the decisions of those and who will order from me. So my only job is to share what it is that I believe in and how it has changed my life. God Mm -hmm. will do the rest. 
And that is a firm belief of mine. So I wanted to give you a couple examples um, that have really just highlight that this works. Um, both of them are at gyms. I clearly spend, maybe I drink too much coffee and I work out too much, but <laughs> these are the two places where I spend most of my time. And um, one in particular um, was in Boston. We were in Boston, and I went to actually had a referral from a girl on our team, actually, and I went to a gym, and I, I wanted to, it was actually a, a, like kind of like a pure bar, a bar studio, and I really um, wanted to go there because it had free child care um, when you worked out, which is a huge bonus. If you have free child care for me to work out, I love you, and I will be there. So... I went to this gym, and I went in there, and I was like, man, I love this place. It had quotes of women empowerment and love yourself and all this stuff that was just so me. I mean, it just spoke to me. And so I just said, you know what? Worst thing that can happen, I'm going to send an email to the owner of this gym, and she's never going to respond, and I'm going to be the same person. I'm not going to die. Or I could send her an email. <laughs> And tell her truly how I feel and see what happens. Well, I did. I just said, you know, I love your studio and I have such an adm admiration for what you were doing here. Um, honestly, I love to meet people who I think that I can capture some nuggets of wisdom from. May I buy you a coffee? And you know what? Not only did she say yes, but two days later she partnered with me in business. Mm. So... If I would have kept that to myself, just a simple like, man, I really love it here. This person who created this must be amazing. Mm -hmm. If I would have kept that to myself and not been mindful of sharing what it is that we're feeling, when we're feeling it, you think someone looks pretty, you think someone's doing something smart, you think, tell them. Why keep that to yourself when you could absolutely change the trajectory of their life and your life by simply mm -hmm. telling the truth? So... That was one example, totally extraordinary. And then the other example is a CrossFit gym we actually went to for the first time um, a couple days ago. And there was this man that's running the CrossFit gym, and he just started, We, you know, I asked questions. He, he doesn't have one of his legs. And so I just had said, you know, do you mind my asking what happened? Um, again, because I'm just, I'm the raw person. I will ask and say anything. If it's the truth, it's coming out. And so he told us this story about how he lost his leg. And I'm, of course, just listening. And it was this very um, traumatic thing. He's a father of four. And he mm. basically, long story short, decided to, to have a CrossFit gym um, instead of letting life knock him down. Um, after losing his leg in an accident. And I just, I'm and tearing up, I'm saying, I just think you are so amazing. Partnering with someone like you, I just said it, partnering with someone like you would be such a phenomenal opportunity. You are the kind of person that just lights me up. And at 3 o'clock today, we have a meeting to talk about business. Mm -hmm. So simply because I just said, you're awesome. I want to know more of you. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. tell me more of who you are. Please let me, um, you know, steal some wisdom from you, and I will give back whatever I can. But I just, I mm -hmm. love that, and I've just found the more honest that I am, the more truthful and just raw that I am um, with people, the, m the more amazing my life becomes. I mean, in fact, we had dinner with two people we met at church on Sunday, and last night we had dinner with them and their three girls, and um, we have big plans with them in the future, too. And it was simply because we said, you guys are awesome. Can, can we can we meet with you outside of this church? You know, so just being really mm -hmm. honest and just having the objective of meeting friends because Shackley will come out. Our business is not about selling products. It's about making friends and, and why you do what you do is what's going to sell what you do. Sorry, that was a long one. Oh, <laughs> I loved good. it. Yeah. I loved it. Was it was so good. Yeah. Oh. And, and, and it's a great lead in now to the toughest part of meeting with people for many new new distributors is how do we close after we've had these lovely conversations. Right, right. And and one of the things that, you know, I was just going to point out there, you know, there's a lot of people on the call that, I mean, Ashley is tremendously outgoing and friendly. And we all can improve in that area. But some people were just not as as wired that way. And I, and I want you to know that it is okay, that you too can be extraordinarily successful in Shackley because even shy people can move into the position that she has, which there's a confidence but there's also an ease and an intentionality. So I want you to know that you don't have to become this massive, outgoing extrovert to find mm -hmm. people in your life. Be you, but then develop that kind of confidence in what you have to offer, that, that intentionality that you are going to offer it when those needs come into your life, and, and then be at ease with it. I think that you can take the beautiful message that Ashley has shared and apply it to all personalities types, and that's 
I don't know. I just thought I would share that. So mm-hmm. we do. I think, that's, I think that's really smart because that's the point, you know, is that people are going to love you being you the most. If you go out and you're yeah. trying to be somebody else, it's going to shine through. So everybody right. really just hone in on the skills that, that you already have, and that's what's going to make you miraculous. And being honest and ready to share when it, it presents itself because it will. So, okay, we do want to talk about closing. Closing was a big deal for me uh, in my business. A lot of people hate it. They hate it because we have some really serious examples in the world of a heavy-handed close, a manipulative control-type control, control type close, a high-pressure close, and that is the opposite of who we are. So if you don't have a concept of closing or you even hate the word or you're afraid of it we want to give you some skills and some mindsets that you can move into it really really well and the first thing for me was to recognize that closing wasn't me telling them what to do or telling them what I wanted them to do closing was me being a good leader and leading them to options I've done my job well I know where they're at I've shared Shackley uh, strongly and now it's up to me I cannot just say good luck with that hope it goes well it's <laughs> going to be up to and sometimes we do right because we're right. nervous and we're scared and we've done this great presentation and then we like freak out and we're like okay have a great day thanks for coming but it's you have to do this they deserve it and that was again it's a mindset they deserve and need for you to do this well so a couple key things you want to have a plan practice your clothes make sure you know what your steps are I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this but you really want to see it in a healthy view you are being a good leader if you if you close and so here's just a couple things they're looking for directions they need to know that we're the advocate we need to offer some solutions and I love to have conversation here and say let's talk about tell me kind of where your questions are at and what you're thinking and let's see if we can come up with a really good first step and that allows them to know I am not making the decision for them it's just what Ashley said I'm not deciding everybody should come in as a super gold I am doing my job well so they come in in the right way and get the most out of what they're looking to do with Shackley, right? So um, you're going to just, you can just see these points here. Um, you're going to offer options, not 6,000, even though we have 6,000 options. <laughs> you're going to offer some <laughs> options of how they can get going. Um, and I love to use the words, you know, a lot of people decide to do this. Or something you might consider is this. I heard uh, a guy the other day talking about how to have a strong close, and he said, you know what? One of the things I said is, you know, may I make a suggestion? I loved it. I thought that could be really good, especially in a one-on-one situation. Can I make a suggestion? I find a lot of people have to decide kind of where their heart's leading, what's the highest priority, and then what works with their budget. So let's talk about that. You know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just, we just want to create the capacity to be comfortable doing our job. And you can see our job is to help figure out how they can do this. We don't want them to lose the house so that they can start on a good Shackley program. We want them to be able to have Shackley come into their life in the way that's right, but we know the value of the products as well, and that's our job, right? Our job is to help figure out how to get these products into their life and help them have a good, strong start. Um, and I love this last point here. Understand the difference between ex- being exuberant and enthusiastic and confident and having focus and clarity and good ideas and suggestions for them or being pushy and manipulative. They're very different. Pushy and manipulative is about me and my agenda. Exuberant and enthusiastic is about them and what this can do for them. So, mm. okay. That's so great, Lisa. And I just want to just pause just for a second and give each of us here a real-life example. Because many times when we introduce Shackley to people, they may have never heard of it or um, in some cases have never thought about non-toxic cleaners or never thought to supplement. So I just want to put us in that example for a second and pretend that you are meeting with someone to decide what water softener would be the best one for you. And they've given you a little rundown and all of that, and they have maybe three choices, just like we have, say, offer three choices. I'm totally going to ask the person, what do you think is the best one for my house? And he might, or he might say, um, or I'd say, I don't know which one to choose. And he might say, well, for your size home, I'd go with option two. You know, whatever. I mean, think about that. This happens all the time in regular life. For example. We don't. We don't always think about it with Shackley. Somehow it seems different to us in our minds, but it actually happens all the time. Mm-hmm. And um, you could put anything in that. What sliding glass door should you have? What, you know, whatever. We, it is very helpful. I mean, when you think about that, it's very helpful that he knows all the products and he knows what water softener would be best for my home. And so that's exactly what we're doing. We're just helping them and suggesting or recommending 
what might be best for them. And people appreciate that. They actually really, I really appreciate it because I don't know a lot about water softeners. I don't even know if there's three options, but I just said that. <laughs> so, um, okay. Um, so here, just some more, just adding on to what Lisa said, um, we want to avoid, uh, what do you think? Let me know if you need anything. And I totally did this in the beginning. And then I was calling Tammy, wondering why no one was ever ordering. And I think I was scared at this point. And so I just kept throwing information mm -hmm. at people. If they didn't say right then they wanted to order, I'd be like, okay, I'll send you some more information. <laughs> so, anyway, but this is is how to avoid those things. Um, you might want to say, um, you know, which products are interesting to you? What if we made a list and then we could work on, um, you know, kind of a priority? That's a great way to do it. Um, you could say, my goal is always to help my members get their memberships free. Here's some deals around that. I love that one because people love free. Um, and then I let, this is what, again, what Lisa said, just having some suggestions. A lot of people I know um, have chosen the Vitalizer or chosen this Life Strip because of this, this, this. And, and that's, again, think about the water softener person. That's really helpful when you kind of can guide them. And we know if they would start with a product like Vitalizer or Life Strip, they're going to see really good results in 30 days. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why we, we promote those like that. And then just to be careful not to overwhelm, um, you know, I love this language. You'd probably benefit from a number of the things we have, but what if we just started with these basic things? And then maybe we could add another product next time. That's just, it's just beautiful, beautiful languaging. Um, so well, here's a little, let me point ahead. out, when we're the ones to say, well, maybe you only want to start here, what happens is they then tend to be the ones that say, no, I think I would like to add, you know, that other thing you mentioned mm -hmm. too. Always mm -hmm. better for us to be the understater and them to say that they want to do more. That's a really nice relationship to have. Absolutely. And by the way, while we are on this, I, Katie just texted me and she said, you make sure that Ashley gets credit for that idea that you shared, Becky, about oh. three, three times a week. Um, Posting something about how Shackley is impacting oh, your gosh. life. Ashley. <laughs> there you go. Ashley, I didn't even know it was you. It was a great, great. I, honestly, that's okay. <laughs> I did not care. Everybody <laughs> uses everything. And all good ideas from everywhere. So. But that's a really cool one. I love it. But anyway, it anyway keep, go keep going, Becky. That's absolutely right. Well, I think I first saw this dialogue with Harper. Um, and I love it because it really... Um, follows that format of the use share of the use share build and so she says this at the beginning of the event that she might have you know thanks so much for coming tonight and um, we'd like to help you with some of the choices you're going to make or maybe this is the closing I'm sorry it's not at the beginning because we're talking about closing mm -hmm. um so maybe you've heard about some of the products that you're interested in tonight. Great. We're going to get you set up with that. Uh, maybe you've heard about the products and you're interested in how you'd like to earn a little money to be able to pay that. That's the share part. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. she says, um, if you want to join us in the business to share the gift of Shackley with others and begin building a career. So that's the build part. And then I love that she just acknowledges at the end, you know, if none of that interests you, that's, that's okay. Um, you might want to share this information with somebody else and I'd be glad to to follow up with them. Um, and thanks so much for joining us. So just some really beautiful dialogue um, on how to close. Good examples. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ashley. Now the, these, so this um, is these were from last week, by the way, <laughs> yep. um, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. when we were talking about nutritional consultations and we were getting a crunch at the end of the, of the, um, of the hour. So I wanted to make sure that you had a chance to share how you close because these were two really good slides. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this was with uh, nutritional consultations, but it really can be used anywhere. Um, you know, it's a lot of these things. So the let's pause here, how is this all feeling for you can absolutely take place in the middle of a one-on-one -on -one when you're just talking broadly about Shackley and maybe not particularly about their health, but really just checking in with people where they're at. Um, I think that keeps the conversation flowing rather than you just going off on a tangent of a million different things. You know, you're, you're having a conversation with somebody um, this next one was how much do you think you spend on medication? So this is more in the realm of when people get to that point of I what about money? You know how am I going to spend? Well, how much money am I going to spend? I think a really brilliant um, thing to do, and I actually learned a lot of this from Lauren Napoli, was um, to to help them understand that it's a replacement rather than an addition. 
So asking them, you know, what kind of, how much are you spending on breakfast? What kind, you know, how much money do you spend on things you know you shouldn't spend money on? Or, you know, just having conversations about um, money that they're spending and where they could maybe just redirect their money to try Shackley out for a month. And I always kind of hone in, give it a shot. It's 100% money back guarantee. Um, don't look at spending more money. Just, just redirect some of your money in a different way and see what happens. So. Um, additionally is the open door clo um, the open door closed so if ever somebody is like ah, you know I just don't know if right now is the time I'm, I'm just not sure or I'm, I really don't have money right now and they kind of really slam the door in your face that's okay um, I just like to take the approach of you know what I totally understand so validating where they're at when you are ready um, let me know because my door will always be open and so we do that because humans are a very prideful people and if we don't respond or give them any indication that we might have been upset by their response, when they are ready, they, they probably won't come back to you purely because they have a little bit of a pride issue mm -hmm. for maybe have being a little rude. Because <laughs> um, people will acknowledge that. I mean, I've had a lot of people who are like, I'm mm -hmm. sorry I never listened to you for the first three years. Now I'm ready, you know. <laughs> um, and so... You're, you're leaving that door open and making sure that they know that that door op is open. So, so now that I've had a chance to learn more about you and your health concerns, this could be a one-on-one -on -one as well, I'd like to ask if you, this is my favorite thing ever, if you close your eyes and just snap your fingers, what is one thing that you would change about your health right now? And the reason why I love this so much, I would do this at an event, I would have each person go around and say one thing they'd want to change, or I would do this in so many different arenas because I have had... Um, so many instances where I thought I knew exactly what I would suggest for somebody and then I asked this question and I was totally wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and not maybe wrong, but I was going for, I think, you know, a vitalizing plan would be really great, foundational health, it'd be amazing. And then I asked the question, what would you change if you could change one thing? And I had one girl in particular who said, um, I would change my, my joints because I can't be active and that really mm -hmm. keeps me kind of schlumpy in my, the way I eat and the way I sleep. And all this stuff, and I'm like, oh my gosh, joint health complex, what was I thinking? One, you know, five days of joint health complex, your whole life's going to be transformed, you know, <laughs> so it, it was a totally different approach, and if I wouldn't have asked that question, I wouldn't, wouldn't have known, so I think that's a really great thing to close with. And then the next thing is um, the deadlines with a personalized incentive. I love incentives, but I only love them if I also can attach a deadline to them, and as we constantly try and make note of, don't break the bank. Um, people really will respond to anything. I've had people who are like, I don't know if I have the money for like a vitalizing plan. And then I say, I'll give you a free sample pack. And they're like, okay, I'll do it. It's not so much about the, the value of, of whatever you're offering them as much as it is that they think they're getting a deal. Um, so you can offer anything on the wide spectrum of things. But I really love the personal idea. So you can do something personalized. Like I also know that you mentioned stress. And so I would love to offer you a free bottle of stress um, relief complex if you order by blank. But you can also do something like I had a, a woman who spoke a lot about headaches. And she was starting with the vitalizing plan, which is great for her. Um, and it probably would help with other headaches. But I also love our headache remedy as opposed to like Tylenol and Advil, which for us, I'll just share because I know people will ask, is um, CalMag, vitamin C, and performance. So I just gave her a sample of each of those things to try the next time she got a headache instead of Tylenol to, see, to give it a shot. And offering that simple incentive that let her know, not only am I giving you something free because I like you, but I also was listening to you the whole time. I was really listening to you. That's what I love about the personalized thing. So um, really giving them an offer um, that, that matches what you were talking about. Um, this also talks about the good, better, best options, um, really finding out. I, I do ask, everyone knows, I ask questions like, what's your what's your budget? Let me make sure that I can advocate for you the best in terms of products, but also with your budget. And I don't want to give you a bunch of options that don't match you. And I think that really shows them that you're advocating for them, and it's not so much about the sale, and again, much, much more about making sure they get what works for them. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you're not going to have the answer right off the bat. That's okay, too. Um, I think I really prefer people who say, you know, I don't have the answer, but I can find it, or let me work on this, I'll get back to you by tomorrow, like really being honest um, and, and giving it some time. And then, um, and yeah, that's, that's about it for this slide. But really, I think the incentives being personalized is, is a really important tool here. Great suggestions. Mm -hmm. All righty, so let's talk some action steps. Um, now, here's how cool this all ties in. So we've talked about the 2000 PV plan, right? If you get that 2000 PV plan written out, now you know the activities that you're going to do, right? So the plan dictates the activities, dictates the work, 
right? So mm -hmm. make sure you have your activity set up. And now you get to use these basic principles to invite people to come to your meetings, right? So you've got your list of names, and I'm doing these out of order because my brain doesn't want to my brain does not want to be cooperative. Um, it doesn't make sense to me to do it in order. So just follow along with what I'm saying. Enter your list of names into your working folder so you're organized. You have your plan. You have your activities. Now you use your principles to invite people. And then you want to be prepared because you're going to have awesome meetings. So make sure you feel good about the close. You're going to have opportunities to do one-on-ones, maybe before or after meetings. So make sure you're ready. So what do you want to offer to people? What do you want to say? So have your bullet points written out for how you're going to close that meeting so that you can be a good leader in guiding them through that process because they need you for that, right? Um, just like Becky was talking about, she doesn't know anything about soft water water softeners or I don't even know what they're called. So she, she, needs, an expert. she needs an expert to tell her what she needs and they really do need that, right? You guys are following me. This is like a game sometimes. So, um, I think I hit them all just in a roundabout way of order. Yeah. Good mm -hmm. well, plan. So yeah, I, I think your order was preferable, actually. <laughs> okay, so we want to show you something now that we, Joe and I, came up with this idea because we know that word tracks are helpful. We know all these beautiful dialogues that our our trainers share with you. What we've done is captured them, and we've tucked them into the back of this um, webinar, the slides under an addendum. So. Here you will find a whole bunch of word tracks and, uh, and examples. Joe, you want to just mention a couple of those? Uh, a couple. Uh, well, <laughs> oh, you're, oh, you're looking at the questions. Anyway, they're, they're, cause, no. <laughs> I just wanted did to show up what we did here. Yeah, well, I think it's, and I think some many of these are with like a third party reference, the ones I like that one, you know, second one. I just watched this amazing webinar and you came to mind several times. It's all about women's health and talks. And some of the things we've been discussing, this may or may not be of interest to you, but I thought I'd reach out and see if you'd be interested in watching it. Um, you know, just a any of those kinds of things are, are just, the word tracks are valuable. And to this day, I want to just say, even for Mike and I, who have been involved with Shackley for a little over 40 years, I will still write out, uh, us, even maybe if it's a sketchy word track, when I'm going to make calls, because I want to be on track and I want to be at my best. And I want to mm -hmm. make people feel good about the conversation with me. So, so, Becky, if you click, 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 they'll just see, you know, there's one for setting up a wellness conference call. There's another one. There's more word tracks for a whole variety of things there. And, um, and so we'll, I just want people to know that they're there. And those of you who find that helpful, you can see some that, that fit you. And then, Joe, I have a feeling that we've got some questions and I can't seem oh. to access them today on my computer. Oh, really? I'm going to have to have a chat with this computer. Okay, so what, what have you got? What have you got in your in your question let department? Let me address. There? I I think I confused a few people at the very beginning. So let me if I can go clean that up a little bit. When we were talking about the gift fulfillment option and the five and ten dollar shipping rebates. So here's here's how it works. And if you're a director and you haven't gone in there and played around with that, um, just do it because once you do it a few times, you're going to understand it way better than listening to me explain it. You can say set up a gift for your members next order. If it's a reward for an order that they're placing this month, then of course it can't be attached to that order. So you wait to see if, if they're eligible and then you go in and you set up that gift fulfillment. So if you have said 100 PV, you'll get $5 off your order shipping. 200 PV, you'll get 100. Then you wait till that order comes through and then you set up that specific coupon for that member. Hopefully that clears it up because I saw two or three questions coming in and it um, looked like I successfully that's, confused that's everyone. So mm -hmm. does that does that make sense? What just came out of my mouth? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm hoping so. Okay, it'll, good. Make, okay. it'll make more sense when they go and click on gift fulfill. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, Joe, what you got? Uh, Barb, tell them where they can find the archives. Better health. Better future. <laughs> <laughs> Better future starts today dot com, and then for, then it's, this is the the paid uh, subscription, and that's where you'll get them. You know whatever your name is, you put at the end of that address. That's where we we archive all of these sessions, and that's why we we put so much detail and information and dialogues on the slide so you can go back and retrieve them and they're also available there on podcast so if you oh we forgot to put the 
ordering thing. Oh, you know what? They have a website. I know a Facebook page now that you can. I wonder what that's called. Is it BH31? Is that what it is? Oh, yeah. Standing for Better Health, BH31. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the Facebook page? Yeah, I think. Okay. How did you know that? Okay, that's very good. Well, maybe it is. Anyone? (laughs) Is is Chris um, contacting us to clarify? Anyway, you'll have. There is a place where you can tell them if you want to. If you don't have a subscription and you'd like that, and remember, you can also go uh, to. I think it's about fifteen dollars a month, something like that. But um, you get your own personal webmaster, and so all of these ideas that learn and earn that Becky talked about in the pre-call. By the way, those of you who join us later, um, we have uh, 10 to 15 minutes before we start where we share um, ideas, marketing ideas and um, and helpful things, just ideas are, are there. Sometimes uh, people's stories of things that they've learned and lessons that they've learned, they share. Um, so uh, we we include that now at the in the archive as well, but at the close of it. So at any rate, um, and I have that website. It's it, I, I'm sorry, Barb. Go ahead. Go ahead. And finish. It's B H I Better Health in right B H I mm. Thirty One Days Sharing Group, and um, I just searched it and found it and requested and was accepted all in about ten point five seconds. So how about that? <laughs> so we went. Yay! They even accepted you. That's, I really know. Know. That's what was impressive. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so somewhere, and, and I think if you even go to Better Future Starts today, I think even then there's some way you can figure out how to. Anyway, we'll, we'll get you all in there. Uh, Learning from the Masters is another Facebook page that has information on it. So we'll get to Chris and Michelle have taken very good care of us. They've made these really wonderful, accessible uh, websites for us to help us grow our businesses. So we thank them for that publicly again. Okay, anything else, Joe? Yeah, here's a good one for Ashley. I think someone says, when I give two options and then I ask what works for you, I get people telling me, I can talk to you at such and such a time, but it's when I'm not available. What do I do then? Like <clears throat> when she, the person who's inviting them is not available? Um, right. You would just simply say that, you know, oh, darn it, I am not free then. Let's keep exploring. Here are another two times that I'm available. Do either of those work for you? So you just keep going back and forth and and giving those two options. Sometimes it's just not going to work. And I think, you know, again, just take that honest approach. Darn it, that just does not work for me. But I would love to keep exploring other options. Mm -hmm. Uh Nice. There are two other questions. Oh, go ahead. No, go on, please. There were two other questions specifically, Ashley, for you. One was if you can tell the specifics of the headache remedy, like how many of, of the things you said. And then... Um, just say one more time about your um, sheet that you have for each of your members that you talked about in the pre-call. Sure. Um, So the first one, the headache remedy, I do five vitamin C, two CalMag, and eight ounces of performance. So just the the three tablespoons of performance and eight ounces of water. And that's what I do when I have a headache. Um, I did not invent that. It was invented by people on my team, Rachel Tabor and Ellie Bowers, and it's extraordinary. Um, and the other question, oh, the, um, the form that I have, that can be found in the business leader guide that's on learning from the masters. Um, and I can attach it again if that would be helpful for everybody as a separate thing. But it's, um, it's something you can easily make, too. Uh, it's hard to really explain. But I'll just, I'll just attach it as a, um, a Word document on uh, learning from the masters. Perfect. Thanks. That'd be great. And then there are a couple of questions um, that people have about uh, post, make, doing postings. Can you, can you do it on, do you have to do it on your business page? Can you do it on your personal page? Um, I have something to say about that because I just learned yes. something today from Laura Toso. Um, so I do not have a business Facebook page, but you definitely can post on that, of course, and you can schedule posts on that. But I did not know until just this morning that we can schedule posts on our personal Facebook page, um, which is very helpful because sometimes we're not around our computers, but we just like what Ashley was talking about, we kind of want our presence to be out there. Um, so when you, if you um, go to your a uh, Facebook page that says your first name, not your home page, but the one that says your first name. So mine says Becky. So I go to that page and I start, like I, I put the cursor in the post, like I'm going to write something. There is um, 
right underneath it, there's like a camera and a few other icons. The very last icon is a little clock, and you can set um, the clock for when you want that post to go out. Um, Get out. I know. <laughs> just we were like we had our accountability call this morning. We were like totally techy. It was awesome. Um, so anyway, I did not know you could do that. I'm totally going to do that because I tend to be more free during the day. But I know a lot of people aren't looking at Facebook during the day. So I'd like mm -hmm. to create them during the day and have them maybe be posted at night or on the weekend or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a really um, a really fun thing about that. Um, From that more of the, the genius, question? great idea. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, oh, did that so answer the question, though? Sorry. That's fine. Go ahead. Did I that think, answer well, the question, too? I think oh. the question was, which one do you do it on? I find a lot of people um, mm. don't prefer. I have a business page that I never use. I do everything on my personal page. Mm -hmm. um, I think most people will run that personal. Like Ashley's example about the eye makeup remover, that is a good thing for your personal page because that's her living real yeah, life. Absolutely. So I think a lot of these suggestions that are getting shared. Who I don't use. Exactly, yeah. and that's what most yeah. people say. So, yeah. You know what, though? I think I, personally, you're going to touch things that you didn't realize needed to be touched. If that makes sense. So, on a business page, it's only going to be people who want to know about Shackley. On your personal page, now you don't want to do a bunch of deals and salesy stuff on your personal page, but if you're just doing like run-of-the-mill posts, just like you would, I love this restaurant, I love this movie with Shackley, you're going to get to hear from people that you didn't even know or maybe weren't on your radar for Shackley. Right. Right. Yeah. The the other thing I want to mention is one of the um, segments that we had at the master's meeting, and I haven't told you very much about that, but it was um, quite lovely, that meeting. Um, <laughs> uh, some very exciting, exciting, exciting things coming, and then they... they um, issued a gag order on all of us, and we couldn't oh. tell you anything, and I was very upset about that. And so, um, the but one of the, we had a segment with um, our, uh, Marjorie Fine, who is one of the most wonderful human beings that's walked the earth. She's been the head of Shackley Legal for a million years, and she did a segment with us about, um, they are concerned about the increased amount of FDA uh, Food and Drug Administration and FTC, Federal Trade Commission, regulatory activity toward um, network marketing companies and um, and and uh, vitamin so. and vitamin claim right um, c companies, mm -hmm. and and so when we're on our f on Facebook, we are very visible to anybody, and so we we just want to be mindful, find a way to share your story that doesn't make a um, a claim that Shackley products cured a disease. We're all pretty good about that, but um, it, it's about our languaging. And, and, and so things like I am uh, that showing a picture of a product and just saying, oh, I'm so glad my order just arrived. Um, my, uh, I ran out and my allergy symptoms are starting to reappear. It, it doesn't say that Shackley products cured it. It, you know, it just subtle things. Um, you can say things like, um, um, I just want to shout out to, uh, you know, Mary Smith who introduced me the Shackley products two years ago. This is the the second spring that I've been through that I've been pretty much um, allergy free. Things like that, you know, didn't say Nutriferon and alfalfa cured my allergies. You know, it's that that kind of thing. It's got to be very subtle and sideways and not uh, and not mention diseases as much as possible. You know, so just just be alert to that when you are doing things publicly on Facebook. The other thing she said to us is people will ask you questions on Facebook. Now, many of us are in closed um, groups within our groups. That's all fine. But if someone asks you a question, what do I give my um, my father who has um, high cholesterol and, and uh, heart disease or blah, blah, whatever, what you want to do is pick up the phone and tell them don't write it down and uh, and put it in writing. Because we asked her, we said, well, what about private messaging and private groups? And she said, in today's world, I just don't know how private private is. Mm -hmm. Isn't that an interesting response from the attorney? So just be aware. So when someone asks a very specific health question, the very best way to handle it is to um, call them. And we always want you to call them anyway, so it's just one more reason to call them. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Good. 
Oh, Barb, can right. you real quick mm -hmm. explain how someone can find the, because on one of our slides we referenced Legacy and Leadership, Facebook is your friend, one and two. Can you explain to them how to find that? Just the better future starts today. And uh, all of the... All of the sessions, all the things that we've done for what, Joe, six years, all yes. of them are, are posted there. Um, some are posted at bobsfiles.net, but I honestly don't, and that's a free site, but I don't know how much is there, and the, the, we've, been, we've been using the other one more, the paid sites, because it gives you, you, know, you can post your picture, your story, it gives you um, a place for your customers to go and be exposed to all the other other topics and things there so we've used that that more but it's you just go to better health in 31 days.com uh, and then the nutritional stuff is at better future no I did it backwards vice versa yeah vice versa better future starts today are all the training things very good thank you so the idea is and in these we're in session four of our eight-week series there will be four more to come um, next week is identifying business partners going to be another very important session um, the week after that we'll be talking I probably should list them all the week after that we're going to be talking about servicing customers um, we have a lot of good new information around that and then we'll talk about the 2000 PV plan how you create that for your directors and how you create that for yourself super okay that's a lot of, lot of material today thanks yeah. everyone for joining us anything else team I, I think that's <laughs> it's a good good session With, and next week will be a very important one too on identifying our business partners yeah mm -hmm. And Love there's a nice, a nice thought to leave us with your largest fear carries your greatest growth. <laughs> so mm -hmm. so this Love is it. the week we pick up the phone. This is the week we make our invitations um, to all those different vehicles that Ashley walked us through. Use them all. Use email. Use Facebook. Use um, messaging. And use the telephone. All beautiful ways to connect with people and invite them to things. Mm -hmm. You're off and running, everybody. All right. See Have you next day. week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, training team. Superb session today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 We, here's our, our Monday Wellness webinars, and just to um, point out, we have a couple of interesting webinars coming up. I want to point out to people, one is called A Walk Through the Product Guide, which we have not done before. And gosh, Joe, how many years ago was it we were doing those oh. CDs with Bob Ferguson? But Oh, yeah, and they were well. <clears throat> and we would, <clears throat> we would use those as an incentive for customers to listen to it and then we'd give them you know free shipping or something or other which we're going to talk about in a minute and um, and so somebody got the idea who was it was that you Joe that that why don't we do that as one um, of our it might have been my brilliant idea <laughs> <laughs> I, I would take it, it. <laughs> but what a great idea and so Hannah Sharapan um, and others are going to be coordinating that so that's coming up so <clears throat> you might want to give us a trial run before you invite too many you know new, new customers to it but it will be archived and our what our, what the intention is is that we will do one this first one, which will be an overview. These will be an hour long. It'll be an overview about, you know, Shackley background and um, and Dr. Shackley and Roger Burnett. But then it will be, you know, reviewing the product categories, and we'll we won't be able to have time to do deep dive into every product, but we'll highlight some, and then we'll close with. Um, uh, the personal care products and the uh, cleaners and then just a little bit about the business opportunity as we would in a new member appointment and then in subsequent months we will divide the next one into a part one and a part two and then we'll go into more detail so you how, so then leaders can use that however they want if you want people to listen to both of them and give them a bigger present thing at the end so then you'll have it so anyway that's coming up just wanted to give you a heads up about that I'm excited. Perfect. That awesome. That should be good. And then, but the one I really want all of you to talk about this morning is the next slide. And this is about. Um, <clears throat> This just was announced this last week, and many of us didn't even know 
but they have now added five dollars off of shipping and ten dollars off of shipping as one of our options in the gift fulfillment category. So um, Becky and Lisa and I don't know if Ashley's on yet. Um, I would I would love for you to talk a little bit about how you use gift fulfillment now and how you have been how you use um, shipping and. Um, as a as an incentive, and then Becky will we can go to the next slide where you have a list of some of yours. So maybe mm -hmm. Lisa and Ashley, maybe you want to begin, and then Becky can take that next slide. Sure, sure. And I just see Ashley's name, so I'm going to unmute her real quick. Um, yeah, you know what? I love I love shipping promotions, and I always have mm -hmm. loved to uh, offer deals throughout the year. Um, you know, if you if you place an order this month at this amount, we want to you know rebate your shipping. I've always been hesitant to use the the shipping that we have, the ship share that we have as business leaders, because you can't cap it. And so when I and what I mean by that is I have rather thrifty, intelligent members that would order. <laughs> 14, like three 14 pound boxes, and I would be paying $100 in shipping. I, it, this yeah, would happen. Exactly. And so I, I, I learned, right? And so then, anyway, so I couldn't automate it, is my point. I would always have to write out a little check if I said I, I would give you a shipping rebate up to like $10, right? Well, look at here in this thing. Now we get to pick the shipping rebate right here in the um, mm -hmm. thing, and it comes off that yep. order. Gift Gift fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm sorry. My technical mm -hmm. language is flowing out of me. <laughs> okay. And the now, thingy, when you do the stuff, you know, but I love it. I love it, and you can pick it, and you can do a lot of really things. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a promotion this month just for my referral partners, not my whole member base, but for my referral partners and say, I, I love you, you know, for being my referral mm -hmm. partner. Everyone who orders an order will automatically get $5 off their next order because I'll have to set it up after they order this month. But mm -hmm. if you order an order of $100 or more, you'll get $10 off. And so I just think it's simple and fast, and um, I'm really excited about it. So go ahead, Becky. Or Ashley. Just, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, oh, Ashley, do you want to talk a little bit just so we can make sure we can hear you? Sure. Well, there yeah, you are. Hey, like, sounds good. We're getting <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Oh, good. Um, yeah, I'm, this is extraordinary. It's such a great um, offer. People love free shipping. I don't know what it is. You could give them a free gift mm -hmm. worth $25, and they're more excited about $5 off shipping. I mean, I tell you <laughs> what. So this is definitely something to take advantage of. And mm -hmm. with the gift fulfillment, it actually has a – you can put a deadline on it. So you can say – you know, everyone knows what? I love deadlines. So you can say you must order by blank, and, and it will automatically cancel it for you if they don't order. Yes. So you don't have to worry about going back and making sure that you take it off or, or whatever. So I love that part about it. But go ahead, Becky. Um, just to add on what you just said, Ashley, sometimes it is confusing. What Whenever you pick any of these things, the computer says you have created a coupon. And then you're like, what? I thought I was giving a gift. The <laughs> gift is the coupon. <laughs> so um, whatever you have chosen here on the list, and there, this is just a screenshot, so there's actually more to choose from, um, it will say you created a coupon. And you can create um, actually several at a time. There is a cap, though. I did once that I wanted all my members to get a catalog on their order, and that's one of the options, too, is you could put a new catalog on, which I highly recommend doing it this way because it's only $1.75 off of your um, account with Shackley, but if you try to mail it, it's like $5 to mail plus yeah. it's $1.75. Right. So right. it's a really, um, really good thing to put on um, people's orders, but I think I tried to do like, I don't know, 60 people or something. I think there is a cutoff, so maybe just check before you spend a lot of time um, uh, putting people's names. And then I think just it's call. Oh, I think we're many people you can put on there. You want several people to get it because I think unless that's changed, there might there might still be a cap. He just shared with us is that if you put ten dollars off of shipping as their coupon and their shipping is only eight forty nine, I hope I get this right, Julie. They will only charge you the eight forty nine or the eight uh, ninety nine or whatever. So, um, so it's all it's all really nicely done there, which is awesome. Okay, there's a lot of people on the call um, that don't have this available because this is one of the things you get when you become a director. Oh, so we wanted point. to point that out because otherwise you'll spend maybe a half an hour trying to find this and it's not really there yet. <laughs> right, hang in there. <laughs> work, with your, work with your upline until you – I mean, our goal is for all of you to be directors. Yes. Um, 
it should be coming up pretty soon, you know, on Eight Weeks to Director by the end of March. We, are, we hope you're all going to be there. Um, but in the meantime, work with your your upline on it. And I also want to point out on the gift fulfillment is when you run any kind of specials, and Becky's about to show you some of the ones that um, she offers here, and you can go you can go to that slide, Beck, is um, sometimes it's helpful to do it in small chunks of people. So that so that you're if you're going to do a campaign, maybe do it with ten people first this week mm -hmm. and another ten next week. The reason I say that is it'll make it a little more likely that you're gonna you know follow up with it, and uh, because mm -hmm. it, you know it always takes multiple touches. So um, I, I asked Becky to make a list of some of the strategies, some of the incentives that she offers gift fulfillment for. Thanks for making this list up, Becky. Oh, you bet. And some of these are Lisa's. I'm going to have you, Lisa, talk about four, five, and six. But um, I got these ideas from you all. So this is not just my thing. This is what you guys have shared. And um, the newest one that I've done is if you take a picture of, of you and your products and share your excitement in some way and then tag me in the post, um, then I would give them $10 of up to $10 off their shipping off their next order. And so that's a, a perfect example. If you see someone do that and they've tagged you, then you can go in and change, do that gift fulfillment and give them $10 off in shipping. And then you can notify them and say, hey, I saw your post. Um, thanks so much for tagging me. I already clicked that. So um, you have X amount of time to place your order and I'm thrilled to treat you, you know, or whatever. And then I did put in, um, like an example of a Facebook post. I sent that in, um, the email that I was telling people about these shipping discounts because some people use Facebook, but maybe they haven't posted really. And so I just wanted to give them an example of what one could look like and what they might want to say or, you know, whatever. And then be sure and tell them whatever your Facebook name is. So my name is Becky Miller Choate. I have my maiden name in there um, so that they can find you if you're not um, friends yet because you have to be friends, I think, in order for you to be tagged. I don't really know all the things yet, but I think that's right. Um, that would make sense. Please. Yes. Um, then I love for people to write up a testimonial, and I use this one. This is actually the one I use the most frequently is for them just to, um, if they've shared something with me, I'd say, could you, um, would you mind just sending that to me in an email? And I just say three to five sentences is fine. Some people um We'll do a little bit more than that, which is great. But then again, I'll, I'll offer something um, off their next order. Um, this, the next one, number three, uh, this is one of the ones that was pre-programmed in the Earn and Learn program that I really liked. And it's for someone that's already completed the Earn and Learn program, but let's say that they um, really enjoyed learning. And so they have an option that I copied and put into my program that says if you um, listen to three of the webinars in a month and you place an order that month, then you would get up to $10 off of shipping. And so it's just a nice um, way for people to continue learning and, and educating themselves. And I feel like the Earn and Learn program, and that's on the Better um, Health in 31 Days, and that's a subscription site, but that is one of the best ways for us to identify um, business leaders because the people that love to learn are the are typically one of the people that are going to also love to share. And so I love using that. But Lisa, could you do the other three? Sure, sure. So Christmas in July, uh, this is just, you know, uh, a way to kind of generate summer sales because sometimes they take a little lull. So I'll just offer a Christmas in July special. I usually do attach my promotions to some sort of a, a PV. So for everyone who orders 100 PV or everyone who orders 50 PV. Um, and many years I did a 10% rebate, I, but I really love the gift fulfillment. So I do utilize it more. It's much faster. Um, and there's just something kind of exciting for them to get this extra uh, bonus in their next order. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, just build something up fun around that and say, we love it's Christmas all year long because we have the best members in the world you know be something like that be be silly and fun and give them a gift um, and then uh, this is one that you know Barb was kind of mentioning just rewarding them from listening to a webinar any, we do lots of earn and learn programs, but boy, if you find a webinar that really uh, grabs you and you love it, uh, you know, let your members know that we have just had the best webinar come out, and I'm so excited about it, and I think that um, you will get so much from it. So I am giving my members a reward if you listen to the webinar and send me your top three, you know, favorite points about the webinar. I'm going to go mm -hmm. ahead and review you. So it's just stuff like that, rewarding the behavior, you know, and just but making it fun and and making it like uh, a feel good thing and just kind of stirring the pot of, of interaction. So, mm -hmm. I just, 
This is Joe. I just want to make a quick. All those are excellent, excellent ideas, and I just want to. We, you, you, it, the point came up about at least I think you said about being selective, maybe choosing a group of people. Or Becky, you mm -hmm. said it. I don't know. Um, don't. I don't think you. I think you want to be careful bit that you don't just blanket any of these things and mm -hmm. have it cost you a ton of money that you really right. can't you know afford. Mm -hmm. But you might target you know people that haven't ordered in three months or six months, or you might target uh, as a reward to your faithful users mm -hmm. or referral partners, like you mentioned, Lisa. And what is a referral partner? Okay, so for me, a referral partner is anyone who brings me members. Uh, typically, they've become a distributor because it only makes sense that they get paid on their PV. Mm -hmm. But anyone that's host something, anyone that brings me, um, share Shackley and connects me to people, I, I put in that referral partner category. So okay. they're not really building a business, but they are actively bringing people to me. Um, and I'll, I have a few members that actually want to talk to about becoming a referral partner. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to say, I offer promotions every now and then just for my referral partners mm -hmm. and see if I can move a few members into that category this month because of it. So okay. That's a great oh, idea. I'm liking that. And so here's one more idea that we got from Susan Knott, and I thought this was so Yay. darling, mm -hmm. but, um, but we did want to <laughs> have um, a few hints around this. So, um, and Ashley, do you send things like this, or is there any comment you want to make around this? Oh, yeah. I send... Um, all sorts of fun stuff. I my like you were saying those follow up campaigns. Um, I will at the beginning of every month when I do my PV planning, I will choose um, like ten people or so where I do something like this, whether it's around the holiday or um, just uh, a fun gift for no reason. But it comes with a little thank you card for appreciating them, and it's just a really good, um, simple way to keep in contact with my customers and um, thank them for being my customers and not send 200 things out at once. So every month I send about 10 to 15 little gifts, and they just switch from person to person each each month. And then. Ashley, in record keeping for that, do you just print out your list like off the member center? I'm just thinking for tactical things because I think that's a great. I haven't been systematic about that, and so is that how you? Yeah. Is that how you have your list? Yeah, so I have a printout that I do for every single customer. Whenever I have a new okay. customer, I create a sheet for them, and it goes in a binder. And then that's every time I send them something, I uh, jot it down on their member sheet so I mm. can keep track and I can look at them and see, oh, you haven't had anything in, in a month or so, so I'm going to pick you for this campaign. So I spend about a that's day perfect. doing my PV planning. Yeah, so I spend about a day doing my PV planning, and I'll go through and find 25 people that need a special something from me because they haven't in a little while. Yeah, I really like that. One little tip when it says Viz Vivic Sample Hint. Um, when you send those, my, my tip would be to put it in some kind of padded envelope because I did send those out in regular business envelopes and then they burst and it looked like someone's giving them like bloody mail. So <laughs> no one got murdered um, at the post office or anything. But just a little hint that sometimes that one in particular might need a little bit extra protection. Oh, Very good. That's a good hint. All right, Lisa, <laughs> Lisa, let's do let's do our countdown and get started. Today's got a really important topic is inviting and closing, and I'm so glad there's so many of you joining us today. So, Lisa, countdown and let's get rolling. All right, one, two, three.